Hi, today we're going to be going through dot point three point one five, which is describe adaptations of a range of terrestrial Australian plants that assist in minimizing water loss. So describe, that's basically name and define as well as give characteristics. That's exactly what we're going to do today. So okay, we've got adaptations, which is uh, the key word inside this dot point. Now adaptations is uh, anything that's actually uh, allowed for the organism to survive over a long period of time, which differentiates it from other organisms. So cool, an adaptation, right, uh, adaptations are actually very common in these plants, and we can really easily tell that these adaptations have allowed these plants to survive. Since Australia is a very uh, hot, humid, and uh, arid environment and has very very rough climates for plants they've needed these adaptations in order to survive so first off I'll define what transpiration means and it means the evaporation of water from stomata of leaves now transpiration is actually the main form of water loss in plants and you might ask why do you actually need transpiration in plants um, well that's because transpiration allows for the evaporative cooling of a plant which is essential in temperature regulation in pretty much all plants okay so let's move on plants which live in areas with limited water supply are defined as xerophytes now xerophytes are what we're going to be focusing on this time and uh, they must these xerophytes they must achieve a balance between water consumption and survival so these adaptations allow for this to occur now something that we've never realized that these these plants in the deserts and all that it must have completely escaped your mind but like h how are they supposed to survive with such little water well that's where these adaptations come in and these adaptations basically allow for them to maintain this balance between how much water they have and the ability of actually surviving and how much water they can actually expend expend in in whatever needs they need to do so he, here's a little fun fact 98 percent of water loss occurs as a result of transpiration so now we know that transpiration is the main cause of water loss and is pretty much what plants are trying to find a balance in between in order to survive and to actually cool themselves down for temperature regulation okay so now we come down to this little statement many plants that live in hot and dry conditions display complex xerophytic adaptations features that which have evolved and allow these plants to minimize water loss while maintaining functions such as cooling the plant and photosynthesis okay perfect so there are actually four ways to reduce water loss uh, which are well known number one which is reducing internal temperatures and that's through the physiological mechanisms allowing for plants to use less water for evaporative cooling so we've got an example of this now remember we need to give examples as much as we can for this because it's it's based on Australian plants and our example our examples will be based on Australian plants as well so Let's start off. The salt bush has waxy leaves that reflect heat and light, and the eucalypts and banksias have coarse leathery leaves with a thick cuticle to protect them from excessive sunlight. So over here, you can actually just see that, uh, just just a little picture to kind of emulate what I'm trying to say. So see, see all these that that stuff. That stuff is to allow for the excessive sunlight to actually not penetrate through, and uh, these these internal temperatures can be reduced cool so uh... something else that i mentioned here was waxy leaves now waxy leaves are actually mentioned a lot in adaptations and waxy leaves they really do help they help reflect heat and light and therefore they help reduce internal temperatures cool so let's move on to the second one second one is reducing exposure to sunlight now this is quite often uh, this quite often occurs in arid and desert environments and is is a very common adaptation uh, by plants in order to actually maintain a balance of water inside their systems now the changing orientation of leaves so that the stomata are not exposed to direct sunlight so just as seen here how the leaves are now face downwards in order to not actually get exposed to sunlight and therefore have reduced the uh, internal temperatures while reducing exposure to sunlight reducing the surface area of organs that have the highest proportion of stomata stomata uh, which of course is also again here and the complete loss of transferring light plant uh, transferring plant organs cool so um what 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 I've really gone through here is that by reducing the exposure to sunlight they are also just reducing the amount of water expenditure as well as the uh, reducing the internal temperatures so that's that's something to notice and lastly 
Um, an example for this one, an Australian example to be uh, precise, would be something like um, eucalypt trees where their leaves actually go downwards every time there is a, a lot of sun and that's that's mainly because of this reason to reduce exposure to sunlight and at the end their main aim is to maintain as much water balance as they can as well as survive in those environments okay so now we've got reducing water gradient now this one's quite, quite tricky and it's it's basically so that plants can keep their stomata open for a longer period of time as there is not much water being lost and so gases exchanged for photosynthesis can occur free freely. Now water gradients, it's it's not something that I would particularly use in my uh, exam or whatever because it's hard to explain even for me so I would, I would probably say that I'd stick to the other couple of adaptations but that's just my personal preference. In explaining wa water gradients what I mean to say is that the, the gradient of water is actually by the plant itself, right, through these mechanisms is controlled and therefore they can, um, there is not as much water being lost and so gaseous exchange for photosynthesis can occur freely. Um, and an example of this, an Australian example, of course, is porcupine grass, which has curled slash rolled leaves, which enclose a microclimate of humid air to reduce the difference in water potential. Okay, so let's keep on going. And the last one that we get down to is water storage. Now this one's quite obvious, and some plants like the calandria, calandrinia, uh, called succulents, have adaptations such as flashy stems or leaves which are able to swell up and retain moisture when it is available. They then survive by using this moisture during dry periods. It's just really smart mechanisms by plants, which allow them to store this water in whatever place they can, and then use it in a in a time of need. Okay, so this is just an ex this is just a photo of this uh, calandrinia, and you can just see this here. Cool. So this is how they look like, and there's these little stem things here, all them, which allow for them to store the water. All right, so that pretty much concludes it. And I really hope this helped. Thanks for watching.